thanks for tuning in. Uh, the format of this video is going to be a little bit different. Instead of the typical video where you just see what I'm doing on screen and hear the narration of my instruction, uh, I'm going to do something here where I'm using Microsoft Teams and I'm doing that because it allows me to show two different student screens. So this is just going to be a little clip uh, from our instructional session that I did with a couple students where we used their two screens and jumped back and forth and had the common screen provided by Microsoft Teams so that we could kind of see what was happening on each other's screens at the same time. So thanks to Angel and Hunter for uh, participating in this little training session. You'll see uh, their screens as I say, uh, as I explain these steps. Uh, I do have a video that I did uh, a few years ago about how to manage uh, work sets in Revit and use the collaboration tools. Uh, this was a, a, an update that was needed though because that video doesn't show the cloud-based BIM 360, which is uh, a fairly recent innovation and something that's pretty crucial to uh, working when you don't have a common network. So uh, the way this video starts off is we're going to jump in at the point where the first member of the group has built uh, a, a basic model and he's going to save that Revit file and then at the moment where he's kind of got that ready where he's going to begin to share with his other group mates he's just going to go to the collaborate tab and hit the collaborate button and then begin the whole process of creating what's called uh, a central file and then his group mates using the BIM 360 cloud connection will be able to access that central file and begin to build their own local files and that's how the whole collaboration process begins so that's where we'll pick it up in the video here click on collaborate and it'll probably ask me to save the model so I can do that. I'll click save model. And then it'll prompt me, of course, for a location. And uh, let's just dump this on your desktop for now, Angel. And this is just going to be called work sets demo. Actually, yeah, it's just a demo file, so that's fine. We'll click save. OK, so now that the file is saved, what it's going to do is it's going to initiate this process of collaborating. Okay, good. This is a good sign, Angel. So the fact that you can choose the second option, BIM 360, means that you have access. This is where you'll initially see access problems if your email isn't a safe email address. It wouldn't allow you to click on the slower button. So we'll click OK to get this process started. And then we have to find the right folder. Now, you're only going to have access to one folder but it's going to require you to make several clicks here just to kind of dig in and find where this is located. So click on state and you'll have to click this initiate button several times. So initiate once and then you'll see the one group folder that you have access to. So that email that you received probably two and a half weeks ago, uh, just inviting you to a certain group, that's the group folder that you'll see listed here. And if you click initiate, it'll take you kind of within there a little further. It's probably going to be in project files that you want to do the initial saving. So once again, just click on project files, click initiate. And that should be it. Uh, you should see nothing listed here now. So one more time on the initiate button, click that. And then finally, it's going to start this process of saving your collaborative file in that online folder. So um, I think when I initially described this process, I talked about you know needing to set up a central file and needing to set up a, a local file. You don't have to do that. So because we're doing this on Angel's computer, this is going to become the, the central file for the group. And you can add others later if you decide you need to, but this will become, I should say, a central file for the group. And anytime anybody else in the group goes through that same process, and I'll show you what it'll look like, and we'll jump over to Hunter's computer to do the second step. But anybody, anytime anybody goes to this file, it's going to automatically detect that you're a second user. It's going to set up a local file which is just basically your version of the central on your own laptop, OK? So the process is complete, the initiation process, and you now just click on, it says, how do I invite? But don't worry, that's already taken care of. So then you just click on close. And the second step here, the second major set of steps, would be that you would click up here on work sets. And what you'll see when you click on this is that Revit by default has now created two default work sets. Not sure where the window's gone here, but the work sets window that would pop up here. Have you got a second just screen? Just give me a second. Yeah, I, I have the screen. OK, so while Angel, uh, there we go. Good, thank you. So now this is the window that you'll see. It says work sets, and it gives you two by default. Everything that's annotative, so all those little elevation markers, your level datums, any dimensions or whatever you may have had in the file is going to be placed on this first one, which is shared views and levels. 
And then anything else is just going to be on what it calls work set one. So at the moment, by default, those walls were placed on work set one. They don't have to stay there. And the way that I move them is I create a new work set. OK, so I'll click new and then I'm going to call this new work set walls and I'll click OK. And at the moment, I'm the only one working or angels, the only one working in this file. So he automatically gets listed as the owner. And you can see that now this column says that the walls work set is editable because he's the owner of it. So then what he would do is he would click OK and he's going to get this little prompt here that says, do you want to make walls the active work set? So because we had established that this was the new one, it just sort of goes into the next mode, assuming that you want to keep that as the active work set. I'll click yes. And what that means now is that anytime I create any additional geometry or um, add anything to the file, it's going to automatically place those objects on the walls work set. So if, for example, I create a new wall that runs through the middle of this, that would now be on the new walls work set. And how do you go about confirming which object is on which? Well, all you have to do is just click on, for example, a wall, and you'll see here in the properties window, there's a display down here now down towards the bottom in the section called identity data that lists which work set it's in. And you can actually change that right here. So if uh, you'll see in a second how there might be some limitations on this, but if you see, for example, uh, another work set called main floor walls, you'd be able to switch it here as long as you owned or had access to that work set. And that's what we're going to kind of see next. So after Angel's gone about, you know, adding some geometry and he's got some work sets set up, uh, what he's going to do, and this is kind of a process that you'll repeat again and again, is you'll go to the Collaborate tab and you'll click on Synchronize with Central. And another way to put this is you're basically just uploading information. So the important thing to remember about work sets and about collaboration in BIM 360 is it's not real time. So nothing that you're doing is automatically going to be visible uh, in your group mates, um, on your group mates laptops. So this is just a confirmation step here that lets me know that it's going to save this or synchronize it to this location. Just click OK. And now everything that's been happening on what you can see here is going to be uploaded to that central file. So essentially what's happening here is this file that we're seeing is going to be Angel's local file. This is the one he's going to work on on his laptop. And luckily it doesn't require any special management on your part. It's not like you have to choose when you open Revit up whether you're going to work on the central or the local. It's just going to automatically take you to your local file. It's the only one you'll see, which is a nice improvement over the way that we used to do it years ago before we had BIM 360 and we were just using the SATE network. OK, so that's done. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to give Hunter control of the screen and I have to just make you a presenter to, in order uh, for that to work. Mm. So let me just uh, drop the visibility here for a second. And then do you want me to see if I got to open up that file? That file? Uh, yeah, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, like I say, I'm going to make you a presenter. Hunter, we're going to see your screen and then we're going to look at the steps you go through to access this. So let me just reveal the participants here and find your name and make you a presenter. OK, good. You should see that option now and then just set up screen sharing so we can see what you're looking at, Hunter. And we'll just wait for the uh, switch over here. Good. OK, all right now. Uh, just a second here. I've got to drop my preview window down. OK, good. All right, so now this is the next part. So this is Hunter's screen. This is group eight number two. And I'm going to request control again so you can see my cursor here, Hunter. OK, one second. Okay. And I'll just kind of navigate around your screen like I did with Angels. OK, good. There we go. OK, so this is the, the, the key part to this. Uh, there's a little extra icon that you wouldn't normally see or paying attention to, and it's just right next to the blue R. So this is the main um, sort of home screen. Now they've got this new one. When you've got BIM 360 active, there's this little extra button. If you don't have any files open, you don't have to worry about it because you're only going to see this screen. But if you do have projects open, you're just going to want to make sure that you click on this little icon here in the upper left right beside the blue R. And the crucial thing is it's going to allow you to click on this button here. So you'll see a little blue B and you'll see SATE listed there. And this just lets you know that you have access to certain BIM 360 folders in SATE's access. So 
Next step here, as I said, you're only going to see one because it's the only one you have access to. You don't have access to all the other group BIM 360 folders, so it'll just be this one. Click on that, and then you'll see similar steps that we saw on Angel's screen, where we have this split between plans and project files. So if I click on project files, we're going to eventually see that file that was set up on uh, Angel screen, and there it is there. So work sets demo is the one that we are working on. So Revit's going to automatically detect that Hunter is a new user. He's one of the three members of the group. So all that, you know, setting up local files and everything is already taken care of automatically. We don't have to worry about that. It's going to just automatically detect that he's a new user. There's the geometry that we built. Good. So far, so good. And then what's going to happen is He's going to go to, let's say, the Collaborate tab at the top here on the ribbon. And over here on the left, he's going to click on the Work Sets button, and he's going to see the same set of options that Angel saw. Specifically, he's going to see that Angel is the owner of the Walls Work Set. Okay. So we're going to do a couple of things. As Angel now, I'm, mim I'm mimicking Angel's role in this. I'm going to click on the New button, and I'm going to call this one, let's say, Partitions. And it is absolutely much way too small for me to see if I'm actually typing this properly here. The screen is showing text at about a half a millimeter, so I'm trusting that I spelled that correctly. You did. You did with my middle-aged eyes. Thank you. Okay, good. So now because uh, Hunter did that, you can see that he's listed as the owner. Okay, and so at this point, if he clicks on OK, it's going to give that same prompt about wanting to make this the active work set. He'll click yes. And then he's going to do something like this, where he might go to the architecture tab and click on the wall tool. And he's going to specify uh, a different wall, let's say, and I'm not going to worry about what type. Let's just say he takes that one. And then, of course, he's going to create this wall here like this. OK, good. And as we saw before, if I was to click on this wall, this partition, he'd see that over here in the properties window, it's listed under the partitions work set. We know he's the owner of it. OK, so let's see what this all actually really means when you start working away and modifying your file. If Hunter clicks on this wall and attempts to move it, he's going to get a little warning that's going to pop up here. So what this is letting him know is that that particular object is on a different work set, one that he doesn't have access to. So if he really wanted to move that wall, he would have to place a request and then uh, so you can do that here, and then what will happen is on Angel screen, and we won't jump back there, but we'll just I'll just kind of explain what Angel's seeing here. So on the Collaborate tab over here, there's an Editing Request button. And then if Angel clicked on that, he'd see that there was a request from Hunter to have access to that wall so Hunter could move it. Now, that's actually not something that you're going to do very often. It's, it's unlikely that you're going to need to manipulate things in other people's work sets, but I just use that as a way of demonstrating how Revit keeps track of who's got responsibility for which objects in the file. And as you would expect, it's setting up a condition where only certain people in the group have access to certain objects so that we don't mistakenly get the situation where somebody says the wall should be over here, somebody says the wall should be over here, and Revit doesn't know how to reconcile that. So that's the process. Now, the custom part of this is that um, you're going to have to decide how you want to set the work sets up. And as I've explained, typically what groups have done in the past is they've done it by floor. So there's a work set for the parkade level, and there's a work set for main floor, and there's a work set for second and third and fourth and on and on and on. And then one person will book out or take ownership of that work set. And that's the way that they can be you know, reasonably sure that they're going to be moving partitions and adding toilets and everything else to that floor. And nobody else is going to you know, offer any sort of conflicting versions of what that might look like. So just to kind of show you some additional development in this, Angel, on your screen, go into your work set, your, uh, make sure you're on your walls work set, and just add another wall that maybe runs, you know, anywhere in the file, wherever you like. And what we're going to do once Angel's complete that step is we're going to just up here, we're going to click on the second part of the update process, which is the reload latest button. So once Angel lets us know that he's got that wall in place, we're going to click on Reload Latest. And then we'll see wherever it is he revealed that wall. Uh, should, uh, I, should I reload? Or synchronize uh, to me. Uh, yes, yeah. So yeah, you put the wall in place. Yeah, click Synchronize with Central, because remember, that's kind of the upload feature. Yeah. 
And then we'll just all wait with nervous anticipation to see where Angel put his mystery wall. Okay, is that good to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So then you click reload latest, and then you'll see this window reappear here that kind of shows you the synchronization steps. Uh, it didn't appear this time, but sometimes you'll see a little window kind of with the check boxes letting you know that it's working through all the steps. But there we go. So that's the process. Okay. And um, and then what will happen is, is that if, you know, at this end, if Hunter once again just goes to architecture and maybe he decides to add a component and it's probably going to go to desk, uh, whatever it may be. So got a few other things in here. Can't quite see what that is, but I'm just going to trailer. trailer. Oh, okay. All right, well, I'll just put it in there. So, and it's probably telling me that it's not, uh, well, okay, maybe that wasn't the best example of what to choose here, but I'll back up a step here, get rid of the trailer, but you get the idea. Um, you would add new work sets. If you did have, wanna have some furniture, for example, you'd set up a maybe work set that said main floor furniture. You'd add those items and then Hunter would click on collaborate once again, click on synchronize with central. Maybe we'll just kind of mimic Hunter's part by just doing this. I'll move this wall over. It's thinking a little bit there. There's a bit of lag there moving that wall. There we go. So the partition's been moved. And Hunter goes back to collaborate and he clicks on synchronize with central. And this is where you'll see probably those little, there we go. Confirmation of the location of the central file first. Just click OK. And then you'll see the little window illustrating the yeah, progress on the four steps. And then of course at this point, Angel could click on reload latest and he'd be able to see that shift in the partition. OK, so that's pretty much it. That's the process. There's going to be a lot of little intricacies and things that you have to work out as far as, you know, how your group wants to set the work sets up. But that's the process. And I guess maybe what we should uh, explain here is that if let's say this is the end of the day and let's say Hunter knows that he's got, you know, something else to do because he has a life outside of state. And so he anticipates that he's done for the day. But Angel says, well, you know, there's actually something in there that I might need to work on. So then what Hunter might do is he might click here on relinquish all mine. And that's like taking the library book back to the library. You basically say, I'm done with that work set. So you click relinquish all mine. And then in work sets, you'd be able to see here that Hunter is no longer listed as the owner of the partitions. There we go, right at the top, work set. And you click OK. And then he'd probably just click on the little save button just to make sure that he's got everything up to date on his file. And uh, I always like to use this little button here, which is the close inactive work sets or sorry, inactive views. And then that takes you just to basically one window. And then when you click on the little black X, when you're in this one window, you know that the file is being turned off. Okay, so that's it. So Hunter's done for the day, he closes his laptop. And then in the morning when he gets back to work, he repeats that same set of steps. So he comes to this little icon here, which is the home icon in the upper left. And then he just repeats the process here of clicking on this little icon, which is going to lead him to work sets demo. And Revit knows automatically that he is a specific member of the group. And so when it opens this up, it's working on, it's opening up his local file. So he just carries on working the way that he normally did. So again, the management part, what you're going to have to kind of decide as a group is who owns which work set, um, whether or not you're going to relinquish at the end of the day or if you're going to maintain ownership overnight. Um, you're going to make decisions about how you want to distribute that work. And that's maybe where the, you know, the intricacies are going to come up and where you might encounter some little snags. But as far as the general process goes, that's it. <laughs>